a gut check drive. Look at the move underneath by James Weaver. Three oh, and they and contact the ready. Ready. Up, ready not. How you like me now? Pila and Piro up, win once not. again. There are three races left in the 2005 American Le Mans series. For the prototype championship contenders, the time to make their move is now. Winning is the only option. Second place could mean elimination from contention. In the production classes, the pressure is just as intense. Corporate image hangs in the balance of each race day decision and performance. Add to that personal interest squad battles, and you have a recipe for action. Here we go, Piro comes down to the wall. He has done it. He has won the Petit Le Mans, and like he did in 2001, he has clinched a championship yeah. along this time with Frank Vila. 70 is the magic number for stars of the American Le Mans series today. Three teams who want to join the champion Audi squad as class champions must complete 70% of today's race at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. When that happens, the party can begin. So you must avoid the early mistake. Look at the move underneath by James Weaver. Three oh, wide. Oh, and they contact on three cars. Leto and Shimoda are off. Weaver is through. Leto, serious damage. Four separate classes racing on the track at the same time. It is the chain that connects the new and the faithful sports car fans of an extraordinary endurance racing tradition. This is the American Le Mans Series. California's majestic Monterey Peninsula is renowned for its incomparable scenery, but tucked into the nearby hills is one of North America's most exciting road courses, Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. It's time for the 10th and final round of an already spectacular American Le Mans Series season with the four-hour Monterey Sports Car Championships. Now adding to the scenery here was the official unveiling of Porsche's first factory prototype since 1998. The LMP2 RS Spider was initially slated to debut at Road Atlanta, but it was well worth the wait here. Clearly, Porsche is back with a vengeance and with Penske Motorsports to boot. The car immediately proved to be very quick, and in fact, Sasha Mason obliterated the track record in qualifying. The car is spectacular. Welcome back to Road Atlanta as we move our way ever closer to the start of this 8th annual Petit Le Mans. Hi everybody, I'm Greg Kramer and I'm joined as always by Dorsey Schrader. And folks, this is a 1,000 mile endurance race and it is held on one of the most challenging and fast tracks you could ever imagine. And quite simply, there are a few things you have to do well to achieve success here in Dorsey. Those are our Porsche keys to the race. And all of those developments and possibilities will unfold on one of the most daunting, fast and exciting tracks in North America. Welcome to the eighth round of the American Le Mans series here at Mosport International Raceway near the great city of Toronto. Hi everybody, I'm Greg Kramer, joined once again by Dorsey Schrader. And folks, the biggest piece of news we have to give you right off the top of the show is that the length of this race, normally set for 2 hours and 45 minutes, has been reduced to 2 hours and 30 minutes. And by way of explanation, our ALMS president and CEO, Scott Atherton, has offered up this quote. During a week when fuel shortages have been in the news, the ALMS has not been immune. Like the rest of the USA and Canada, we are having to share the sacrifice while we all face these fuel shortages. We view this as an isolated situation and do not at this time expect situations like this to occur at our final two races. So there you have the story on that development. But Dorsey, it's also got to affect strategy for the teams. And as we look at our Porsche keys to the race, it's topped by fuel strategy. And absolutely right there, Greg. Green flag is out. Lado loves the outside down here. And he's coming right along. Time to look at the move underneath by James Weaver. Three oh, wide. And they contact on three cars. Lato and Shimoda are off. Weaver is through. Lato, Major serious damage, damage Dorsey. Leto did a little juke there to show him. Oh, and he got a great run out of five. Don't see that very often. A mistake possibly by Dyson and Leto trying the outside through six. Right, right. Inside. 
Oh, look at Barksley going to try and follow him through. Oh. He's there. They touch. They hit again. Double contact. He is trying now to get by that Pano. So the Corvette's trying to go with him. And Long just parking them. And rightfully so. He is trying to do everything he can to survive here. And he gets down to Canada first, trying to get by those cars in front. And the vents is sort of stymied right now. But they are in their window to get to the checkered flag with no more unforeseen stops, Greg. And Calvin, I have to ask, uh, we have been, they're only doing fronts apparently. And normally you can even double stint. It's fairly cool today. Is this all pickup issues? Well, I think what it is, JJ said that the car has had a little bit of an understeer imbalance all weekend long. For York, if he does this, one to win, he'll be the only person to win Amazing. three straight, Petit Le Mans. But the other thing is, when Calvin was up here, we talked about a little bit of that York was dropped as a Porsche factory guy at the end of last season. And how sweet will it be for him to come back and win the championship, <laughs> you know, the yeah. next year? And with some smoke and drives. I mean, the guy has been just magic this year. Well, Brabham got so hurt in terms of momentum that there goes Borchler as well. Oh, and look at this move, fellows, underneath and picks the lead up. Boy, he threaded the needle drive, in traffic. Dude, unbelievable. Nice and smooth. Don't even look out back. Boy, Here yeah. comes Leto out of that last turn. Leitzinger now on the throttle. It is this close, folks. The margin when they stopped was 40 seconds. Leitzinger had. He's now on the gas. There's Leto right behind him. That is your margin for the overall race lead. And then LMP1. And oh boy, here comes the pressure. Leto steaming up behind Leitzinger. And uh, there's a question to ask. What if Bila had let Leto go by a little bit sooner? That's the battle in GT2 on this final lap. Not as close as the vet battle. Dumas driving incredibly hard now. His last lap a full second quicker than Long's. But we go back to this battle. It is so close. Down at eight. Oh, Johnny a little wide there. That hurt. That hurt. Meanwhile, here we go. Frank Biela, the number two champion ADT Audi, going for win number three in a row. And Werner taking a run at Wallace. Biela up the hill. And he has done it. Biela and Piro win once again. Three in a row, and Bila did it with pure speed in his final stint uh, after that last stop. He was throwing down some awesome laps. O'Connell taking the run, got out of the turn quicker, but too little, too late perhaps. Up the hill, Olivier Beretta, what a gut check drive for Olivier, and that gives him another win with his teammate Ali Gavin, three of the last four. And here's Thank the you, uh, look at this, Dorsey. It couldn't be closer. Dumas has driven brilliantly. Oh, 31 Mark. coming up the hill. Dumas there. Three of the four classes unbelievably close. And Patrick Long just going to hang on. The Alex yeah. Jones momentum has been nipped. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't think he's happy, dude. That is their first win, folks, since the opening round at Sebring. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah,